Well, that sucked. What is going on, everyone? What bothers me, what pisses me off the most about this 7-2 loss to the Dodgers, it's not the fact that it's 2 a.m. right now and I'm tired as hell. I might have to do something with it, but when I saw that lineup, what, 6.30 or so, right? First pitch is at 7.05, whenever the hell the lineup goes up. When I saw that lineup, the loss was obvious to me. The loss was inevitable. It was obvious. It was a no-brainer. It was a lock that this was going to be a loss. The bottom of the lineup, it, it just has zero threats. And I know big picture the entire offense sucked today. We had two total hits, one in the ninth by Hazley, which didn't even matter. So one hit all game long, really, one meaningful hit. So you can look at Cesar you can look at Bryce Harper. You can look at Scott Kingery. You can look at Reese Hoskins. You can look at the top of the lineup too. And and yes, they definitely deserve some criticism as well. But I think it plays a factor when your bottom of the lineup is Brad Miller, Adam Hazley, Nick Williams, and Andrew Knapp. Now, there's no one to blame except upper management when it comes to that because that just means our roster is not there. Andrew Knapp had to play today. We have a, a noon game tomorrow. And Aaron Nola's on the mound. So if you want to match him up with JT Real Muto, Andrew Knapp had to play today. Jay Bruce goes down. Gene Segura's not in. I mean, it is what it is. We just had no options. But looking at who played today, we're talking six AAA guys. I was so fired up with yesterday's win, hoping it could create a little bit of spark. As soon as I saw that lineup, I, I, I knew it. I knew it. There's just zero threats. Now, a two hour and a half rain delay. Two and a half hours long. Did that play a factor? Absolutely. You lose someone like Nick Pavetta and then it becomes a, a bullpen game essentially. And our bullpen sucked today. But I'm not going with Nick Pavetta was fine in his two and a third either because he walked four. He was at 50 pitches. 50. That's Vince Velasquez stuff. To walk four batters. Listen, in the first inning, he had bases juiced. He got out of it allowing one run. I don't know how he got lucky as hell. Not good enough out of Nick Pavetta. He got bailed out because of the rain delay, and we'll never know how piss poor it probably would have been. We go down 2 nothing because our bullpen comes in, right? Garcia, who sucked today, and allows a hit by the pitcher for an RBI knock after walking two batters. How do you walk two batters then allow a hit up the middle for an RBI knock to the opposing pitcher? We're going down 2 nothing. That was in the top of the sixth. Somehow in the bottom of the sixth, the Phillies tied this thing up. Brad Miller gets walked to bring in a run with bases juiced. And then Adam Hazley grounds up the middle. Grounds out up the middle and gets an RBI, but it got lucky. He got real lucky because it should have been a double play ball, but there was some redirection involved with the pitcher trying to make a play there and the shortstop, and it was just miscommunication trying to make the play. It was a ground ball that should have been turned two, really, and it wouldn't have been another run, but we got lucky, and we tied the game up 2-2 in that sixth inning, which made no sense because there, there should have never been an opportunity for the Phillies to actually score runs there. But okay, I'm happy we made the most of it. We actually had guys on second and third for Nick Williams to take the lead. And of course, he couldn't get the job done. He's horrendous. Juan Nicasio comes in the game. And I'm telling you what, five pitches, six, seven pitches later? He gives up a bomb to Freese, who gets revenge for getting hit by Hector Neris yesterday. He takes the lead. Literally, what, six, seven pitches later we lose the lead? Now, speaking of Hector Neris, he gets suspended by the league, but he is appealing it, so until that appealing process 
gets figured out, he is allowed to pitch and he is allowed to go. So keep your eyes out for Hector Neris and that whole situation to go out. But speaking of the bullpen, you just give up the lead. Like instantly, instantly you give up the lead. And we're down 4-2 and we never saw anything close to runners on after that. Not even close to having runners on. Not a legitimate threat at all. Here's the bullpen. The the gross bullpen play at the end. Garcia, one earned run and a walk. Nicasio, two, two earned runs and a walk. Austin Davis, three earned runs and a walk. He allowed a homer to Turner as well. The Phillies pitching allowed ten walks. Explain to me how you're going to win baseball games like that. Listen, I understand. We scored, uh, we hit two hits all game. Our top guys at the top of the lineup didn't produce. But don't tell me that bottom half of the lineup didn't play a factor. That lineup today was garbage. And it's not Gabe's fault. He had to put out there what he put out there. There's really no other options. But it makes me sick when then I see Roman Quinn go up there and have to bat. Like this roster is just not good. And it's filled with triple A guys right now. Jay Bruce going down kills us. It really does out there in the outfield. It kills us. Because now you have Nick Williams in the lineup. Nick Williams in the lineup. Really? Adam Hazley. Really? It's insane. It really is insane. Now we got a quick turnaround with, with a 12.30 start tomorrow on YouTube. Right? Hopefully we can even play. Because looking at the weather right now, it looks like it's going to be tough to fit in. It doesn't look like good weather whatsoever from 12.30 to 4 or 5 o'clock. But Aaron Nola's on the mound. We gotta split this. We gotta split this. Right now we are looking in. We're out looking in of the wild card. Because the Brewers got a W today. We're looking at the Washington Nationals and the Brewers. I can't even process where we are right now. It makes me sick to my stomach. It really does. You got to blame everyone today, though. Like, I think the bullpen was trash. I think Nick Pavetta was trash. I think the rain delay played a factor. Our offense was bad. We had one hit, guys. One hit that mattered, and it was Scott Kingery. One hit that mattered. Sure, Adam Aisley had a, had a hit in the ninth. Guess what? That hit was useless. It means nothing. I couldn't even believe that we tied it up. I couldn't even believe it. It made no sense, really. We had no business tying that baseball game up. And that Brad Miller walk to start it when it was bases loaded and we didn't have a run yet, we were down 2 nothing. Yeah, a couple close calls that could have went either way. Like, I'm thinking of with some of those, if I was the umpire behind the plate, I would have rung them up. We got lucky as hell. But, hey, that's part of sports. And speaking of part of sports, the broadcasting is part of sports. John Cruck, holy hell, did he not want to be there tonight? Now, he never wants to be there, and you can tell he's totally checked out. But he's got to be there for the 12.30 YouTube game as well tomorrow. But, man, did he not want to be there. And, and from a fan's perspective, it, it kind of annoys me. It kind of annoys me. Like, I, I want to hear people who are engaged. I want to hear people who want to be a part of the broadcasting team. Come on. Come on. That's your job, to keep the listeners engaged, to keep the fan base involved in the baseball game. You don't want to be there complaining, it's taking too long. Listen, I know there was a rain delay, you can make the jokes about it, right? It's obvious that a broadcasting team would make jokes about it, about it being late and having a quick turnaround with the 12.30 tomorrow. I guess tonight, really, or this afternoon, I'm really all lost with the time. But give me more than that. Whatever. At the end of the day, you know, this, this game sucked. And that's just what it is. That's reality. We have to bounce back tomorrow <laughs> and split this thing. And split this thing. You, you have to. Uh, you, you have to. After the game, I heard Gabe Kapler speak to the media on Philly's post-game live. He did seem to throw out there that Gene Segura would be in the lineup tomorrow, which is a huge, huge, huge difference maker. Looking at what was... On the, on the lineup card today. 
that's all I really have for you, to be honest with you. This, this game was nuts. I mean, it was slow-paced. There wasn't many hits throughout. A at one point, there was like one or two hits in the baseball game, but 10 walks total between the two teams. There, there wasn't many big-time moments, and, and, and then the Phillies' bullpen just completely, you know, couldn't couldn't help. Couldn't help. And, and the Phillies' offense was bad, too, but when it's 2-2, two to two, you finally find a way to tie it up. You lose a chance to take the lead with Nick Williams there at bat with two men on. But whatever, it is what it is. You tie the game up. You can't allow them to score within six or seven pitches. It just can't happen. And Juan Nicasio, come on. Garcia, Austin Davis. I mean, if I'm upper management and I see what was put out there today, I got to be looking in the mirror, sick to my stomach, that that was even a lineup that was used this year. Like, that's on them. It's not on Gabe Kapler that that was how it is. This is standard baseball. When you have your... When you have a game the next day in the afternoon, you use your backup catcher. You got guys hurt. Like, this is what it is. This is the roster. That falls on the people up top who make the roster decisions. Whatever. Let me know your thoughts. I'll see you guys tomorrow.